friends, welcome to the Ransom Tart Podcast. John Eldridge here solo this week, in a way. Just last week, I was the guest speaker at a uh, local church here in town and thought that the things that I shared in that message would be super helpful to you as well, super helpful for our listeners. So what we want to do is play the teaching that I did there, but let me set it up. You got to have the mood and you got to have the visual. So great worship ends with what a beautiful name, you know, the Hillsong Live song is beautiful and lights dim. And before I come up, a video begins to play. And first, the video is just this gorgeous, like, jungle scene and beautiful cinematography. But you hear this motorcycle in the distance, and you're like, huh, what's that? It's a very short video, one of those classic YouTube, like, amaze you videos. And then the motorcycle, you know, races into the scene. And you're like, oh, it's, it's, he's riding a motorcycle through the jungle. And, but then the next thing you see, cut to the next shot, and he's riding the motorcycle through a river bottom in the jungle. And you're like, wow, is he in the river? Is he on the river? Like, that's weird. And then the climatic moments, you know, music swelling and stuff, and where the river pours into the ocean, he rides his motorcycle out onto the ocean. And you are watching this guy. It's not fake. It's real. Riding his dirt bike, his motorcycle, on the ocean, in Tahiti. Not only that, but he, he goes flying by paddle boarders and kayakers, and then he catches a wave. It's a customized bike, and it has little paddles on the wheels and stuff. You, but you can't quite see that. He just looks like a normal rider, but this, and this guy actually does this thing. And where I brought the audience, the swelling moment of this two-minute video, is this guy with a helmet on, you know, gloves, boots, riding his dirt bike. He's surfing. A wave. I know what you're thinking. That's wild and crazy and over the top. And John's going to get up here now and talk about like wild and crazy and over the top with God. Nope. That is totally unhelpful. Really. There is not a single human being in this room that is ever going to do that. You are never ever in your life or in the life to come going to ride a motorcycle on the ocean. Not in Tahiti or any other place. Friends, I don't think we've given any kind of thought, really, to what it does to the soul to live in a culture where that kind of stuff is the daily fare. Right? This shows up in my inbox all the time. I know you get them too. You know, people texting you stuff. You got to watch this video. And whoa, did you see this guy jump out of this helicopter? And even in the Olympics, like phenomenal athletes doing unbelievable things, totally unhelpful. Because what it does is it sets up an unspoken set of expectations in our own hearts that unless your life is YouTube worthy, your life is stupid. It's boring, right? And and even worse, that if you're going to find God and you're going to have more of God, it's going to come through some amazing experience, something just totally wild and, you know, over the top. Not true unhelpful. And the problem is that makes it totally inaccessible. Our topic is more of God. More of God. Because whatever your current need is, whether it's reconciliation in a relationship or it's loneliness and and failure of relationships, whether it's internal, psychological, emotional stuff, financial, work, career, mission, just clarity or just like help, whatever, whatever, whatever our need is, more of God would change everything. It really would. More of God in our bodies, more of God in our souls, more of God in us. That would be huge. It literally would change your life. 
But when you live in a culture of like the fantastic and the way over the top and the bizarre and the erotic and the freaky, it's like the regular stuff that's showing up, it gives you the impression that if you're going to have like a deeper, richer, amazing thing with God, it's going to have to come in some kind of amazing way. And I have some wonderful news for you. Not even, not even, not even close. Life is totally built on the dailies. Think about love and friendship and marriage, okay? Love and friendship and marriage are not built on skydiving together or trips to Paris or kayaking the Amazon. (laughs) They're not. It's not. Once in your life, you're going to do that? That's not your daily. That's not, that's not even close. That's not attainable, right? Love and friendship and marriage are totally nurtured, built on, right? They grow within the context of coffee together, hanging out, getting a burrito, holding hands, taking a walk, right? Doing the dishes together, reading to one another, or just reading together different things while you're in the same room, right? Isn't it? It's, it's the little things. It's the little things that build a life. And here's the thing. Like, I love adventure. I love adventure. I love the ocean. I love the mountains. I love rock climbing and bow hunting and mountaineering and motorcycle riding and all that stuff. But here's the deal. If you want to go to Yosemite and fulfill a lifelong dream of being a big wall climber, do you know what your daily looks like? You're doing pull-ups. At home. <laughs> it looks really, looks really simple. It's not like amazing, over the top, fantastic. You're doing sit ups, you're doing squats. If you want to do a motorcycle adventure trip through Scotland or Europe, you know what you're doing? You're getting on your bike every day here. You're just going out and, and just getting used to it. You're dodging the neighborhood dog that always runs in front of you. You're stopping when the old lady always breaks in front of you at the last minute, right? You're getting used to it. You're making it second nature. So that then when you do go out, you can do the big wall climbing. You can do the amazing trips, right? I I think God has amazing things for us. I really do. I've been a part of some pretty extraordinary experiences with God. I've seen people healed. I've seen people set free from stuff. But I don't live there. I don't live there. In order to get there, just like to get to love or anything else that's wonderful in this life, it's in the dailies. It's back here in in the little things we do. As I was praying for you and Jesus was giving me today's message, I said, what do they need, God? And he's like, they need more. They need more of me. I'm like, yeah, totally. Need more of God. And he said, so talk to him about how to get there. Share with them how to get there. So what I want to do this morning is just give you some very simple and sustainable and accessible things, because this is another secret of life. Even working out or learning a, a new instrument, if it's not simple and it's not accessible and sustainable over time, if it's not something you can kind of make a habit of and keep at it, you won't get there. You just won't get there, okay? You'll abandon it. So I want to start with Philippians 4.9. Paul in Philippians gives us this really simple piece of counsel, I guess, modeling, direction. What he says in Philippians 4 9 says, Keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. And then the God of peace will be with you. Okay? I love that. I love the grace of this. Keep putting into practice. I think he's recognizing, look, it's not about perfection. It's not about perfection. Can I save your soul from something for a moment? God is nowhere in the pressure to be amazing. In this culture, it feels like you got to be amazing. Be amazing. Have an amazing marriage, right? Have an amazing sex life. You know, have an amazing income. Have an amazing ministry. Do, you know, not even... God's not in any of that, gang. God is nowhere in the pressure to be amazing. 
Paul's just saying, just keep putting into practice these things that you saw me doing, and then God will be with you. You will experience the tangible, life-giving presence of God. I'm going to suggest a couple things that would be pretty refreshing if you did them and, and help you access God. And the first thing is unplug. Unplug. You have to unplug. You understand, I don't know if anybody's told you this, you are under a very conscious and intentional and sustained assault on your attention, okay? Your attention is the last great commodity in the marketplace, and everybody is buying that real estate, and everybody is coming up with the fantastic video and the odd and the bizarre and the freaky to arrest your attention, okay? I'm at the gas station the other day put in my credit card, take out the nozzle. As soon as I do, gas station TV starts shouting at me. And I'm like, you are kidding me. Like, I can't get away from this anywhere. I didn't ask for that. I didn't push the button. Would you like to listen to this assault? Right? It just, it just comes at you. I like to use some of the online Bible programs. Super helpful. God bless the people that put those on there for free. You know, you can get on and look up verses and check out the original languages and that kind of thing. But the thing is, is that they sell the real estate, right? And so I'm on there the other day and boom, immediately, you know, ads start playing on the, on the side. And Google knows your buying habits, right? Google actually knows a freaky amount of information about you. And so boom, 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 you know, here's all this stuff on things that they know will get my attention. Your attention is constantly being taken hostage, okay? Even the weather app. I use a weather app on my phone. I like to check the weather. And so I check in the weather the other day and immediately, you know, the video comes up first of a new age animal, you know, freaky thing washed up on the beaches of Florida, never before seen by man, (laughs) right? This is your daily. This is the stuff that just comes at you all the time. Gang, you have got to unplug from that. You have got to get out of that. That is an assault on the soul. Now, I'm not going to do this tirade against technology, okay? I just want to point out something. Did you know that rates of anxiety and depression rise in direct correlation, direct amount to the amount of time you spend on social media? Did you know that? Anxiety and depression. (laughs) Somebody ought to go like, whoa, that is horrible. Okay, so... At some point in your day, I'm talking about the dailies, where is your sacred space? When? When is your sacred space? You've got to have some sacred space, okay? You've just got to push back 10 minutes, okay? I'm not talking about 40 days of fasting and prayer. I'm saying, where is your margin? Where is your soul space every day? Because if you create that soul space, right, it allows you to, one thing, to detox from the culture, but it allows your soul some space to experience God. So a couple of things I have come to do that have been very helpful. Do not, do not, do not, do not check your phone as soon as you wake up in the morning. Okay? It's there and it's calling. Like, who's texted in the night? Did somebody send you a new video of somebody doing something freaky, weird, and over the top? You know, it's all there. Check your Facebook, right? Your news feed. Don't do it. Don't do it. Not first thing. Okay? Just resist that. And when you first get up in the morning, give your soul mercy. Mercy for your soul to wake up, for your soul to just have some quiet. And here's the thing, gang. If you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. If you create a little bit of sacred space every day, God will meet you there. And you will begin to love it. You will begin. Take back your car time. If you have a commute, take it back, right? Turn off the phone. Turn off the radio or whatever it is you listen to. You have a little bubble. You can literally have a little monk cell there for a few minutes. And the one minute pause, the one minute pause, when I pull into work in the morning, when I pull into the driveway in the evening, what I do now is I turn my my truck off and I just lay my head on the steering wheel 
for one minute, just one minute, okay? One minute. You will be amazed what creating a little bit of soul space will begin to do for you. Oh my gosh, the relief of it. So this is in the category of unplug. And as you begin to unplug, the second thing that I would highly recommend, I'm finding hugely beneficial, is release. You got to release the world. You got to release people. You got to release the crises and the trauma and the intrigue and all of it. There's got to be somewhere in your day where you just let it all go. You just let it go. Because part of the thing now is all of the tragedy of the world, all of the heartbreak, all of the latest shooting or earthquake or, you know, tragedy, all of that is delivered to you on your phone every moment of every day, right? It's all just right there. It's on your computer at work. It's, the soul is, was never meant to endure this. The soul was never meant to inhabit a world like this. That's way too much. The soul is finite. You cannot carry the sorrows of the world, okay? Only God can do that. And so somewhere in your day, you just got to release. You just release it. You just let it go. Bedtime is a good time to do this, okay? To begin to kind of practice this if you keep putting into practice. Try it. Practice this. Stacy and I do this every night at bedtime now. We just say, Jesus, I give everything and everyone to you. And then we usually have to name some things. I give you my kids. I love my, I love my adult kids, but I can't carry them, right? I give you my aging mother. I give you what blew up at work today. I give you the Florida shooting. I, I, I can't carry this, God. I just release it to you. Because as you practice release, what you're doing is you're creating soul space. You're literally creating the, the intellectual and the emotional heart space, the faculty for God to come in. And he will come in. He will come in. He will fill it. (laughs) Okay. Can I point out something right now? You're listening to this going, this is it? This is the this is what's going to get me more of God? This that's not very amazing. Do you see how toxic the culture is? Like we are so conditioned to when Jesus said, I want you to just talk to them about the dailies, I'm like, really? <laughs> because that's, like, that's, not a very, that's not amazing. Like, I don't get to get up there and, you know, blow their minds with some new study or, like, some amazing prayer experience or do, like, inner healing for 465 people. He's like, yeah, no, not helpful. You know that's not helpful because that is not sustainable. As an individual, you can't keep that up. You can unplug, though. You can unplug. You can. You can create a little sacred space. You can release. You can do that. Okay? A couple more thoughts. A couple more things that if you will make part of your daily, it will really help. Because what we're at, the goal is more of God. The goal is more of God. So having unplugged, having released, what do you do with that space? Okay? Well, prayer. Prayer. But let me correct right away. By prayer, I don't mean praying for stuff, okay? I don't mean praying for your mom or praying for the lost or praying for the schools or Colorado Springs or the world or whatever, okay? Uh Uh-uh, that's not the first purpose of prayer, not even, okay? The first purpose of prayer is union with God. What prayer does is you begin to practice just simply prayer. Prayer opens your soul up to God. It allows you to receive him. And so, you know what a great prayer is? It just goes like this. God. 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 (laughs) It's like I'm telling you. Like, simple, accessible, doable. You could do that in your car. You can do that while you're sitting in the, you know, conference room at work. You're just sitting in the party. Inside, you're just going, Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, because as you do that, he comes through that channel of prayer, okay? So prayer is not first intervening for people or asking for guidance or counsel. Yes, there is all that, but in this sacred space, what we are looking for is more of God, okay? And so like just some prayer, 
Just some prayer. Please tell me that prayer is part of your day. Please. Please. Because otherwise, how will you receive the life of God into you? Augustine said that the soul is but a hollow that God fills. We're just empty cups. We're just broken cisterns, gang. Like we need the life of God and we need more of him. Okay? Now, we're going to redeem this little thing, this thing that I loathe called our cell phone. If you have a smartphone, prayer, prayer. This could actually help you with prayer. I work for a group called Ransomed Heart, and we have a prayer app. You can get on our app. They're going to put that on this thing, and that's the home screen on our app. And there are different offerings on there, devotions and podcasts and stuff. So what? The bottom thing is prayer. This is the gold, gang. If you click on that, then what you're going to get is a screen that gives you all kinds of help with prayer. Because most of the time people say, I don't want to pray. I don't know how prayer works. We can help you. And you can read it or you can listen to it. There's an audio version of it. There's a daily prayer to start your day with. There's a bedtime prayer. There's actually a whole bunch on there. There's prayers for inner healing and all kinds of stuff. But like a little bit of grace, a little bit of margin there, that would be really helpful. Okay, so prayer. And then how about some truth? We're just talking about the dailies, just the dailies, just the simple, accessible things you can get to. So here's my question. What is the truth that you are currently clinging to because of your story? What do you cling to? What's, what's, your, current, what's your current bedrock? What is your lifeline? What is the truth? Because the thing about the culture of the bizarre, freaky, amazing, and fantastic is It has shaped us, literally shaped our souls to live on feelings. And we just go from feeling to feeling to feeling. So if I'm not feeling God, he must not be here. Or if I'm feeling shame, then God must be ashamed of me. Or if I'm feeling disappointment, then I must be a disappointment to God. Feelings are a totally dangerous place to base pretty much anything on right? Including love, friendship, and marriage, right? Not helpful. Not helpful, okay? What is the truth that you are currently hanging on to? This is what you're doing with your sacred space. You're you're just coming back to a couple of truths. I put them on little sticky notes. I stick them on my bathroom mirror. So when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning, I'm being reminded, you are loved. I'm like, oh gosh, that's really good, right? And I put them on my computer, at home and at work, just little reminders of things that God, the truth I'm clinging to. I literally write it. I write it on my wrist. This says WHF, okay? Not WTF, okay? (laughs) WHF, all right? We happy few. We happy few. There's a few of you in here who knows what that means, right? I literally tape it to my steering wheel. I have a journal. Some of you journal. Every year when I start a new journal, I will first put in it before I start writing or recording or whatever, talking, you know, I have these core truths that I have in my journal. So at the beginning of the journal, there's this list of like things I'm trying to hang on to. And then they give you a little close up of this. Things about God, right? God reigns over all worlds and realms. God is far above the latest turn of events. God is altogether faithful and true. He never betrays. He never abandons. I'm not saying go write this in your journal. I'm just giving you an example of what is the truth that you are clinging to? Are you living purely on the next video that comes across? Not helpful. Not helpful, but this will save your life. This will totally save. In fact, little stickies. Here's mine for this morning. Okay? This is that's right here. These, this is what God gave to me as I came in here to speak to you. You don't get to know what it is, but it's saving my life. Okay? Can I just have one more thing? Just, just one more thing? Music. 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 Worship. Music is so unbelievably good for the soul. And it opens your soul up to the presence of God. It, it literally opens you up to the presence of the kingdom of God. And so you can redeem this little thing, Right? by all the great apps and iTunes and stuff out there, you have a worship list on here, right? You have your top 10 worship list on your phone, right? 
so that you can access it wherever you are, whenever you are, you're at the gym. Yeah, and, and the gym, like the assault on your attention. You can't even go work out anymore because the TVs are all, you know, kind of thing. I don't want the news. I don't care what Trump is doing. I just came in here to run, right? Okay, I'm sorry for the tirade. Um, <laughs> You have your worship thing on there, and so I'll just put my headphones on, and I'll tune out the world while I'm working out or while I'm walking the dog or particularly in those silent moments in the morning before I look at the world, just a little bit of worship. So like Spotify, here's my Spotify home screen. You can see that I've been listening to Rita Springer, Battles, her song Defender, killer, Have It All, Bethel, unbelievable. And then on my Spotify, I've got my top 10 list or eight, or six, or whatever that is, two, four, six, eight. If I were you, I would take a quick picture of that, actually, because you can cherry pick some of the best worship that's out there right now. But the point being, you're doing this. This is your daily. You're creating sacred space. You're releasing everything. You're just releasing it. And in that sacred space, right, there's music, there's worship, there's prayer, right? There's a little bit of truth that you're clinging to. I'm not, telling, I'm not telling you to read the book of Exodus or, you know, memorize Deuteronomy. Simple daily things, simple daily things. And if you practice this over time, what it ushers in is more of God. And what it prepares you for is, yep, you bet, you will be the strongest soul you know. Friends, we live in very, very hard times. This is a very, very, very difficult time on the planet to be a human being. The level of human crisis and trauma, the uncertainty of the future, the hatred, holy cow, the hatred in politics and and racial relationships and just online, just on social media, and the evil that has been released on the earth. You live at the end of the age. Nobody told you that by the way, and it requires more of God, more of God. We need more of God. We need more of God, okay? So this is the fascinating question. If what we need is more of God, then wouldn't we be structuring our daily around doing things that bring us more of God? Nobody does this. Very few people practice this. And then they get angry at God when he doesn't show up. It's like, wow, that's a little backwards gig. So Jesus, Jesus, I'm just going to pray right now. Jesus, Jesus, I just, I just release it. I release it all. I release everyone and everything to you. I release it, God. I release it. And I I just turn my attention back to you. Oh, God, I need more of you. I need more of you. Would you lead me into those dailies that will allow me to receive you? More of you, Father. More of you, Jesus. More of you, Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Rescue me from the chaos. Help me to create some sacred space and meet me there. I need more of you. I hope now you can see why I wanted to share that with you. I think there's some real, real practical stuff, really accessible things in there that can help us find more of God, more of God, friends. And you've been listening to a sermon I gave in a local church here. But next week, we're going to pick up the conversation. I'm going to have my buddy Morgan come in, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some examples and just give you some more things from our toolbox that we think are simple and accessible and sustainable. You've been listening to the Ransomed Heart Podcast with John Eldridge.